Hey folks, and thanks for coming back to this channel. You hit me at the right time because I have something that is really interesting. What I have here is a stack of ferrite toroids, and I got these from Russia. These ones have a, a fairly high um, permeability. They've got like a mu value of about a thousand. I have no idea what they, they're made of. I'm suspecting like something like uh, manganese zinc. But what ended up happening is I ended up um, dropping one of these and breaking it, and it's brittle as anything. And I figured, what if I put this inside the induction coil of a ZVS driven induction heater or Mazzilli driven induction heater? So this is a a board that I made, and this is a Mazzilli driver or Royer driver, as they're also known, and uh, it has a 100 nanofarad uh, capacitor. This is a pulse rated capacitor. Uh, some MOSFETs, these are IRFP260 MOSFETs, uh, some inductors, and then it's got an independent 12 volt power supply that will supply the gates and get the thing oscillating. Now I've got these on a heat sink. And um, I'm going to turn on the gate supply. So this um, 12 volt uh, switch mode power supply will turn on the gates. So I've got those on. So now the gates should be actually running on this thing. <clears throat> and there should be some oscillations happening in this ferrite. Now this one, uh, th this particular ferrite, you'll notice there's a piece missing. I tried a full ferrite ring and I was trying to uh, induce um, oscillating magnetic fields in adjacent coils, but the ferrite rapidly heated up and um, fragmented. So I then got a Dremel to another ferrite and cut out a little slot like this. And um, it's plugged in and the gates are powered. Now these wires here can supply uh, DC or AC power to the MOSFETs. So basically at the moment, there's no AC or DC power going into these MOSFETs. Any AC would get rectified with these two rectifiers, but uh, any DC will go through the rectifiers and supply the MOSFETs. So right now there's nothing going in here. So um, I have made myself a little frequency meter here, just some, a coil of wire connected into this device here, which will read to me the frequency of oscillation of this. So let's bring this near and see what we're getting. So we're getting 212.6 kilohertz. That's, that's the frequency that that ferrite is oscillating at. 206, oh sorry, 212.6 uh, kilohertz. Now I'm gonna add power from this bigger switch mode power supply. This is like a 600 watt power supply. And we're gonna put a small amount of uh, DC into those switches and get them and get uh, more power going through this Litz wire which surrounds this, um, this ferrite. So I've got about eight turns of Litz wire on there. So I'm gonna increase the, um, I'm gonna increase the voltage and let's see what happens to the, the frequency. Right now I'm at about eight volts going into the system, 10 volts, 13 volts, 15 volts, and we've topped out around 218 kilohertz. Now I'm going back down, and now there's no more voltage applied, and we're back at the natural oscillation from the gate. We're putting about 40 volts onto the transistors. That is getting real hot real quick. Now here's something slightly bigger. Now we're using 60 volts AC from a variac. Let's see how this goes.
So the setup will work with either AC or DC. And uh, you don't hear a thing when you're running DC because it's just completely quiet. But you can hear the mains hum when you use uh, AC, rectified AC. These two rectifiers here will uh, rectify the AC into unsmoothed DC, which um, uh, is enough to heat metals and uh, to uh, braze metals. So here you are, and I have a bunch of these boards. These are, I can make five of these for $2. They're real cheap. And all of the uh, components are readily available. Uh, these are 100 ohm, these are 100 ohm uh, 5 watt uh, ceramic resistors. These are 10A10, 10, 10 amp diodes. I've got two of them in uh, parallel. These are inductors, commercially bought inductors. They're about 25 uh, micro henries a piece. That's a, um, a 100 nanofarad um, pulse rated capacitor. These are used to build Tesla coils. This is an FR307 fast recovery diode. And then there's a quarter watt uh, 10K resistor. So that's your components. And these are just terminal blocks that I soldered in to make it easier to replace components. So you've got your inductor here and you can put different types of inductors, different types of ferrites. Um, with iron, the iron would just get hot and you'd, you'd get almost no heating. So this one, you have to use ferrites to get heating. Heating. This is your um, power in over here, either AC or DC. This is your 12 volt power supply and you just need a wall adapter for this. And that's about it. And you need a heat sink. I harvested this big heat sink. This is way too big for, for this. You, you could use a tiny heat sink for this because these, these stay cold the whole time. Um, but uh, you need a heat sink uh, just in case you decide to run it with uh, longer lengths of time than I've been running it. But it works great and I uh, have measured the frequency at 212 kilohertz. The idea for this really started off with my Tesla coil, which works great and check some earlier videos for how well it will run a, um, a, a ramped Tesla coil. But you can ramp in uh, AC to run an induction heater too. So thanks for watching folks. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you want more details about this for brazing jewelry or small metal parts, just uh, put a comment or you can contact me directly. Um, but I'll be happy to um, give you the Gerber files for this board so you can make your own setup. And you can pretty much use any ferrite toroid. This one happens to be the Russian ones that I got, but I think most will work. And it does help to use Litz wire since you can run higher amounts of current through Litz wire without heating up the wire too much, simply because of the uh, skin effect. All right, folks, uh, thanks for watching. Um, and please check back and uh, look forward to seeing you in future videos.